So we've created the curves to define the inner surfaces of the lacrosse stick. And that has been derived from a combination of the images that we had and the uh, NCAA rules. So let's review really quick um, just the work we've done so far. We've got a handle and a subset of that layer is the, the curves that drive that handle. We've got 2D profiles, again, derived from the images and the NCAA rules. 2D reference lines that are used to create the boundaries for those curves. A representation of the ball. And dimensions that are used more for our, more for our documentation purposes. And you can easily see right now that we have quite a bit of data just layered and stacked on here. And so it's really important to work in layers so that you can start uh, to make sense of, you know, all the different uh, drivers and curves and things like that that are in your, in your model. So I'm going to hide those out. As a general philosophy, I try and start modeling in things as quickly as I can. So if there are, um, so I kind of, in this particular model, I, I view the inner surfaces as kind of the internals or the, the, the givens, the guts that uh, we have to work around. And uh, so we're going to um, kind of put those in and maybe sketch around, sketch around those as well in Corel Painter. But what I try and do is, is as quickly as I can start to to rough in or or put in representations of of hard points in as quickly as possible. And that starts to give you a better idea of what your shapes are doing, what your masses and what your forms are. Um, and to see that right now, let's go ahead and put in some rough surfaces. Now it is always best to model in halves instead of modeling the entire. Um, surface it is a best practice to model just in halves because as um, when you're modeling you're you're first creating your big large surfaces I call you know, they're called sometimes referred to as your core surfaces and then you're trimming and you're cutting away or you're you're blending between uh, between three or four core surfaces uh, to create a smooth object uh, but the more core surfaces that you can start putting in at the beginning, the more of an idea you start to get of what your form starts to look like. Um, so in this case, let's start putting in the core surfaces for the um, for the interfaces here, and let's look at the different options that we have within the surfacing tool set of of Rhino, the surfacing toolbar. Now, in this case, there the surface is defined by four curves and that means we can use the two three or four edge curve surface um, a straight loft in fact would work here uh, surface from network or curves and p possibly a well really a, a sweep to or a bi rail surface and uh, let's go ahead and see what the different commands uh, produce as far as surfaces are concerned. So let's do a network surface first. So just pick all the surfaces that comprise the uh, the network and you'll notice that um, you know there are these letters that pop up and it says that at A, B, C, and D, A, B, C, D, that um, we only have positional um, or positional continuity available. Now, if if at D, B, well, A or C, we'd had some kind of surface, and we'd picked off a surface edge, then these grayed out radio boxes would have been active and available. Uh, tangency and curvature are only available when you're trying to blend to a surface. So again, network surface is very useful for creating blend surfaces. And it's also a really quick and dirty way of creating um, uh, creating core surfaces um, if you've got a relatively complicated surface. You can see it's you know, pretty uniform and it's slightly heavy though. Let's drag the surface away here for reference. You'll notice that dragging it breaks the history on this object. 
and you say, you know, okay, I, I don't want the history at this point, and you continue. Let's see what uh, a two rail sweep creates. So first you select this, the rails, and, oops, try that again. Sweep two rail, we'll pick the two rails, and then we'll pick the cross sections. Hit OK, and go ahead and continue. Now let's drag it away. Well, notice that, there, that we didn't get a history um, being broken warning. So, you know, that means that right now history is, the by rail sweep is not a history enabled command. So that can possibly cause issues to if you think that, you know, you might be changing this, your, your, your curves might be changing in the future. Because re really, you, you want to have these curves driving your surfaces as much as possible. It does, it does save you a certain amount of time um, to do that. Um, so that's something to keep in mind about the bi rail sweep. Uh, now let's try the straight loft. Hit OK. And that's history enabled as well. And let's try the surface from 2, 3, and 4 edges. And drag it out. So that's a history enabled command as well. Well, you notice that even though we started out with the same set of curves, we've got some, you know, in some cases, relatively dramatic differences in the output. Uh, if we select all the surfaces and turn on their control points, you can see that the the network surface has got a tremendous amount of control points here in, in both dimensions. And if we ever wanted to start, you know, tugging, tugging at these control points, it's it's going to be a little unwieldy to to control the entire shape. So if we did want to start massaging, and there'd be a lot of isoparm deletions happening. So that's probably not the command we want to use here. Um, the by rail sweep has created a a a, a, um, a surface that is really heavy on on its on its edges here. You notice that you've got a heck of a lot of control points um, running along the periphery, but it's 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 kept it clean on the on the edges here. Or sorry, in, in this middle middle point. The two commands that seem to have done most uh, nicely with the set of curves that we've produced so far have been the um, you know at surface from two or three curves or you know the straight loft and uh, and actually here this is this has produced the surface with the least amount of control points now if I did actually want to go ahead and add some curvature to some of these um, surfaces like so which is part of the magic of doing things in Rhino is this control point manipulation capability is that you can start somewhat intuitively and easily shaping those extra control points do come in handy and they're and they're just numerous enough that they they control a larger section but in this case I kind of um, I, I don't see this changing tremendously and um, if we did want to further add some more um, control points in there, that, that should be an easy easy thing to do. So let's go ahead and delete those. And we'll create a 2, 3, or 4 edge surface. And turn the control points again to double check. Sweet. So that is a relatively clean surface. I'm going to hide the handle right now and turn on the 2D profile. Something that we forgot to do was add the 